If you want to keep using heroin, that's your business. If you want to stop using heroin, that's our business. Heroin Anonymous, Western New York. For more information, please visit our website at www.heroinanonymous585.org or call our 24-hour hotline to speak to a sober heroin addict at 585-348-8129. Everybody. Welcome to this week's show of Rock and Recovery. My name is Carol Michelle, and today I have a very special guest, Chief Jim Van Bretterode of the Gates Police Department. Hi. Hey, welcome. <laughs> and uh, you know, my office is literally right down the street from you, and uh, this is very convenient to uh, pretty much just walk over here and yeah. come on the show. And it's a, it's a privilege to be here and to uh, talk to all your the customers and, and the people who watch this wonderful show. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm so glad that you're here. And I gotta say, from the moment I met you, you have been in the fight with us for recovery resources for our area. You know, when I uh, became police chief, I said, you know, my, my goal as a police chief is to speak for the people who can't speak or can't speak. They don't have that power or the platform to do it. And so I've, I've always taken my job very seriously as far as trying to be the voice for those who don't have the voice. And so I'm take, I get very passionate when we come on these subject matters, especially this opioid thing that is just, it's just killing and devastating so many families. Uh, it's a terrible, terrible epidemic that, that's in our communities. And so I've become very passionate to try to be the voice for all your viewers and the families who, who know what I'm talking about, who are dealing with this. Um, and so I'm, I'm doing all I can as a police chief here in the town of Gates. Uh, I'm also the president of the Monroe County Chiefs Association, so I, I speak on behalf of all the police departments. And um, this is really close and personal for me to to want to help and, and be part of that solution because I, I'm I gotta be honest with you, I'm, I'm tired of seeing my guys and my gals go on these calls. I'm tired of reading the reports. It's been going on for five years, and um, I, I don't see the the fight going our way yet, and, and it makes it very frustrating because tomorrow there will be another family joining us. Um, who, who never thought this was going to happen to their family? So, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable uh, what's going on. You know, um, just just a couple of days ago, the numbers came out for the month of September. Uh, law enforcement's numbers. I think we had about 82 overdoses here in Monroe County. 13 of those were fatal, and uh, it, it is just mind-boggling that in the past 30 days, 13 more residents of our county. Uh, have passed away from this and it, it just it just seems like it, it's a blink of an eye I, I don't see uh, the attention that, that I think it, it deserves I don't see people scrambling to uh, to, to get in there and, and help us with the fight and so it, and it's very frustrating to be five years into this and our numbers uh, September of 2019 pretty much mirror what the numbers were of, of September 2018 and of course September is our national recovery month where we celebrate mm-hmm. recovery and, and recovery is possible you know what we have a lot of success stories where people have have beat this disease but again it's, it's frustrating um, and when I sit here as a, as, a, as a leader as a police chief and I, I see the numbers and I see the calls that are coming into my community and, and my residents and uh, it's 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 just terrible it's terrible what's happening yeah well you've been like a leading force in our area and I know personally that the families know you you know yes, they do. Yeah, <laughs> and they appreciate all the work that you do um, because you you've made it you have made it personal to you I've made it human I, I humanize this this problem you know mm-hmm. and uh, look at you know when you hear the numbers uh, on July 15th Monroe County released the numbers for the uh, opioid deaths the official report from the medical examiner's office for 2018 uh, 195 people and I said, no, those are real people. That, that, that was somebody's son, somebody's daughter, their father. Um, to me, that's just not just a number, you know, like how many inches of snow we're going to get tonight. That, that, that is 195 lives. Those people had loved ones. So it, it is very personal. And I, I take my job very seriously. 
that uh, you know human life means a lot and I, I just I, and it just makes me sad uh, these numbers keep coming out and I, I don't see the I don't see the energy or the push um, from some of our policy leaders to put more resources into this. Uh, had this been a hundred, had this been thirteen fatalities in September from drunk drivers? Oh, oh my gosh! I, I think there'd be press conferences every Friday. Hey, don't make sure our kids aren't drinking and driving. Thirteen people perished in car crashes from drunk driving. You know, mm -hmm. um, it just doesn't seem to get the attention when it's a drug overdose that other deaths in our, our county do you know uh, and again the flu season's coming and I'll, i'm sure we'll know every flu death that, that comes mm -hmm. starting in probably november we'll have an update on all the flu deaths and uh, and, and again it's very sad and, and terrible but but something about the drug uh, stigma there seems to be this stigma um, when it comes to people who die of a drug overdose i, I think it's alive and, and i think it's it's uh, it's real the stigma yeah it is real and a lot of the policy makers like you said don't want to touch the issue with the 10-foot pole and i don't know if they don't realize that the families of these people vote or what but it's a huge issue in our community it is it, and, and there's a lot of surviving kids that are left behind there's, there's a lot of um, satellite issues and um, that, that come with the death of a loved one or, or, or somebody who's active, actively using and, and their lifestyle is, is not the best you know it creates other other issues uh, that, that we have to deal with in the community and, and, and let's we'll talk about that as, as we come up a little further in our show today about uh, crimes specifically where, where maybe somebody who, who has the uh, addiction disorder goes out and commits crimes uh, to support that that very bad habit and very expensive habit and uh, and some legislation that's going to be affecting the criminal justice system specifically the police and judges uh, that, that goes into effect on January 1st in 2020. It's going to be a game changer, and, and it's not a good game changer. Yeah. Okay, so stay with us, everybody. We're going to be right back. Do you want to keep using heroin? That's your business. Do you want to stop using heroin? That's our business. Heroin Anonymous, Western New York. For more information, please visit our website at www.heroinanonymous585.org or call our 24-hour hotline to speak to a sober heroin addict at 585-348-8129. Hi everybody, welcome back to Rock and Recovery. I'm still here with my very favorite police chief, James Van Bretterode, and we're going to be talking about what's going on in Gates, because we know Gates is on the forefront of this, um, fighting this drug crisis that we're in. Yeah, we have, uh, actually we have a lot of exciting news that's coming out of the town of Gates. We uh, Number one, um, I, I had a meeting with uh, Judge DeMarco and uh, some of the staff from Sandra Dorley's office, and uh, as of October 1st, uh, drug court, which is held downtown with Judge DeMarco, uh, is going to be accepting defendants from the Town of Gates Court. This is kind of a pilot program to see how it goes. Um, we will now interview all the arrestees that come into our booking area, whether it's a DWI, you have a, a shoplifting charge, a uh, domestic violence charge. And uh, we're going to ask you some questions about your, your drug history, if, if you're using drugs at all, and, and if you indicate yes. Um, that'll then be red flagged so that the court uh, will reach out to uh, your attorney to see if you're interested in, in having that case reassigned from the Gates Court to the Drug Opioid Court downtown where they offer you um, uh, recovery versus getting any type of a punitive punishment. I thought that that was just like um Countywide, I didn't know that that was just in the city. No, no, a lot of, a lot of this county, a lot of this uh, drug court was all uh, grant money that that was given to uh, Monroe County to set up that drug court, and a lot of it uh, they they, they started with, with small incremental steps, you know. Okay. And um, a lot of the cases uh, originally all came out of city court. Now they're expanding to uh, three towns. I believe it's Gates, Greece, and Arundacoit uh, is the next pilot, where they they've added those three towns to see how it goes and what the caseload is going to look like. Um, again, this all started on October 1st where defendants in the Gates Court and, and I believe Ron DeCoy is set up in Greece. Uh, you will have the option of having your case uh, heard in drug court if in fact you have some sort of a uh, 
uh, an addiction issue going on. So th that's a great thing. And, you know, I, I think I can speak on behalf of all the, all the chiefs here in Monroe County. Um, if you have an addiction problem, we're more interested in, in getting you healthy, uh, saving your life, saving your family's life, and, and ultimately saving us as the police future calls for your, your addiction issues. We're more interested in wanting to help you than to just arrest you and put you in jail and, and, and have you go pick up litter on the side of the expressway. I don't think that's going to help solve Fine. the underlying problem, which is the addiction problem. So, so look at if, if you're if you're an addict and you're, you're out there committing crimes, you know uh, we, we want to try to clean you up. Um, but but if you're not going to get cleaned up, then I guess the alternative would be to to get some sort of punishment. Yeah, I think I want everybody to know too that. You have personally driven people to treatment. Absolutely. I mean, that's... Uh, one, one, one who the, does that? You well, know, who does that? No, you're right. But I, I think it's important when, when a call comes in, you know, and, and the other issue about Gates is uh, we have the Gates to Recovery, uh, as well as uh, Mission uh, Recovery and Hope is in our town. But Gates to Recovery uh, started in our town. And uh, we have a hotline uh, that's been out there for a couple of years. And believe it or not, we average anywhere between three and six calls a day. On, on that hotline and, and we have a person dedicated to nothing but answering that hotline and I gotta say uh, we've made some huge leaps and uh, leaps and our ability to connect people with treatment so when, when, when somebody comes in and, and we line up that treatment and, and we can't get any way to get them there they call my phone and uh, I stop what I'm doing and get them there because it, I, I can't risk having somebody not receive recovery because of a drive or, or a car ride somewhere. So, you know, I, I personally have, have driven many people, Clifton Springs, uh, Open Access, Helio Health, um, because it's that crucial. That transportation is crucial. I, I, we, we can't have the excuse we couldn't get them there. That's a problem. Uh, ECMC up in Buffalo has, has been a wonderful uh, emergency room to deal with. Um, but again, it's, it's all about how we're we going to get the job done and let's just get it done. doesn't matter how we're going to do it. Uh, we, we have to because it's, it's a life and death situation. So uh, whatever, whenever I can help out and, and then they call me and they say we absolutely don't have a ride and uh, I've taken many people in my car and, and driven them there. But that's the commitment we have. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention about the Gates Recovery, you know, we do have a, uh, a memorial van um, that we started. Uh, August of, of 2018 and that memorial van was in response to the the official death count that came out on, on July 3rd of, of all dates right as everyone was packing their car getting ready to go away for the 4th of July this this press release kind of came out and said 220 people died and, and we said you know somehow we have to put a face to that number you know uh, we, we can't just have that number slip through everyone's minds 220 but it was 220 real people and so that's where we came up with this memorial van and people's photos are on that van but families voluntarily send us the photo we have it printed by our, our, our great partners over at vital signs on uh, ridge road and webster they, they donate all the photos i send them the photo they print it it comes back to me and then we have the family come in uh, at their leisure with all their friends and, and supporters and, and we have a very nice ceremony where they put that picture on the van so if you have a loved one uh, who has passed away uh, because of this drug overdose stuff uh, you certainly can reach out to the Gates Police Department, uh, look up the chief here, and I will get those printed, and we, we can put your loved one on that van. But uh, one, one thing about, that's been interesting about that van is it just really has morphed into something bigger than we ever thought it would. Um, we've had it out in a lot of public events this summer. We went to a lot of parades, mm -hmm. the Lilac uh, Festival, the air show, and it really uh, has drawn a lot of attention. There's just like silence when, when people get around that van, you know, it's, it's being treated very respectfully. Uh, people look at that van and, and when you look at those faces, you know, that, that, those, those look like your neighbors, they look like your family members, they look like your daughter. Um, you know, that this isn't the boogeyman, uh, people who have addiction problems. So you look at that van, people connect with that van because they look at those faces and you know what? That's what the faces of addiction look like. That's what these fatalities look like. And so it's, it really has become kind of a sacred ground, the van, when it's out in the public. It really has become a sacred uh, place for people to come and, uh, and remember loved ones. And, and, and the other thing that I think is interesting when I've been out in public is how many people have come up to the van and they're like, oh my gosh, I know this person, or I, I went to school with this person, or this guy used to be my neighbor. Uh, you know, as this epidemic continues to grow and the numbers continue to grow, 
uh, more and more people are being affected by this and, and at some point most of us know somebody uh, who probably has passed away so yeah um, so this isn't is this closed off just to the people of Gates no in fact we, we we had a family uh, just the other day. Their loved one died in Florida, and uh, we're having that one put on. So, okay, it, it's it's about you, the family. It's about you, the surviving family members. You have someone who's died. Contact us. Uh, it's not just to Monroe County or, or even the state of New York. Wonderful. That's awesome. Cause you know, families that are grieving. Okay, the loss of a loved one. I can speak for myself when um, my daughter-in-law Nicole died of an overdose. It was heartbreaking and you don't you want people to remember her life and who she was not just the addiction you know Absolutely. there was just a small part of it she was funny and she was beautiful you right. know and she was young and vibrant and that's what this van is all about right we, the pictures on the van are happy times when, when you see the photos that people are are sending in um, they're on their fishing boat they're out at a picnic they're with family they're they're having fun that's what we remember when someone passes away, not what they looked like when they were in the addiction. We've all seen the before and after photos, you know, very mm -hmm. effective. Um, but that's not how we want to remember our loved ones. Now, if somebody wanted to have it in an event that they were doing for recovery, they can just contact the Gates Police Department? Contact the Police Department and we'll, you will do all we can to get that van to your special event or, or whatever you have going on. Not a problem. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, we're going to take a break, but we'll be right back. Do you want to keep using heroin? That's your business. Do you want to stop using heroin? That's our business. Heroin Anonymous, Western New York. For more information, please visit our website at www.heroinanonymous585.org or call our 24-hour hotline to speak to a sober heroin addict at 585 Three four eight eight one two nine. No, so uh, welcome back. It's a, you know it's a beautiful fall day. Uh, you know this is when the kids have a great time between the cider and the apples and the, and the pumpkins and uh, you know it's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Is why yes. I'm wearing uh, a pink badge and the pink stars and and, and to uh, recognize again the, all those families and people who, who most of, most all our families at some point have have been touched by breast cancer. So, mm -hmm. but, uh, what's more uh, interesting that we need to talk about? I think though. Uh, Carol, is the uh, January 1st in 2020, uh, some very significant changes are coming to the criminal justice system okay. that um, I believe are not going to be good for the opioid problem, are not going to be good for our, our communities. But, you know, we have to deal with this, the cars that have been dealt with us. So how did this all come about? Well, the budget, um, the budget bill, um, which is probably a couple thousand pages uh, thick, I, I would believe, uh, was passed in March. And part of that was what they call some criminal justice reforms. And, and one of the reforms that's coming is this idea of, of no bail for a, a lot of the people that get arrested. Now, what's, what's it mean, uh, no bail? So typically what happens is if, if you get arrested for DWI, you get arrested for shoplifting, you, you go over to your girlfriend's house, you, you assault her, you smash windows out, uh, you rob uh, a store, right? you know, pass a note, rob a bank. You get arrested, you come back to our office, the police have discretion on whether we will immediately arraign you. In other words, the judge will come in, he'll read the charges to you, and then at that point, the judge will make a decision. You know, these are pretty serious charges or there's some extenuating circumstances I might want to set bail uh, to hold you down at the Monroe County Jail until you get that bail served. Now, a lot of good things came out of when we uh, set bail on people, the judge didn't send them down to the jail. Uh, once you enter uh, Sheriff Baxter's jail, uh, a lot of services now are being offered to the prisoners who come in off the street. Um, the jail is kind of like ground zero of this opioid epidemic. As you know, a lot, of, a lot of the people who are addicted, a lot of our drug dealers are all ending up downtown at the jail with bail being set. Uh, but at that point is when Sheriff Baxter's programs, a lot of them will kick in. Medical services kick in. We, we can test people for hep C. Uh, you can get the medically, uh, um, you know, the MAT program. Um, get some Wait, of those let me, let me back you up for a second. So the budget that passed, this is for all of New York State? All of New York, yes. Okay. 
And um, so this is going to affect all of the counties and stuff. And now you're, you've got this thing that's passed and it's like, how, now what do we do? Well, right? yeah, the problem is the train's coming down the tracks and, and we can't stop the train. So basically what, what they've done with this new law is law enforcement and the judges, we will no longer have the ability to arraign you and set bail on you. Pretty much everybody is going to be uh, arrested, brought to our office, we'll do our paperwork, and then we have to immediately uh, release you. Now, there's obviously some some circumstances that they call violent felony offenses uh, and sex offenses where we still have a right to arraign you. A violent felony offense is a very defined term in the penal law, and the average citizen might think if I get punched in the face, that is violence. <laughs> it is violent. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to have a broken nose or, or an eye socket. Mm -hmm. But that's not a uh, definition of a violent felony offense in New York. It's, it's shooting a gun at somebody, uh, use, pretty much using a firearm. So unless you use a firearm, uh, pretty much everybody else is going to be arrested and released. So what does this mean with the opioid problem? Well, wait a second. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. I mean, who it in their doesn't. right minds would do that? We have, especially like there's domestic violence issues, right? Where getting somebody like away from the person for a little bit, giving them a chance to cool down is probably a good thing, right? Well, if, if you listen to the arguments of, of, of the people that passed this bill um, in Albany, all the people that voted for it was, they, they were of the opinion that people should not be in jail until they're actually convicted of the crime. They should not be in jail until they're convicted. Not really, or not understanding law enforcement's perspective. Well, there are certain people who are really bad people, and uh, there's a lot of benefits to holding them in jail until their trial comes because the likelihood of them going out uh, in that time frame between the arrest and the trial, which could take eight months to a year, the likelihood of them reoffending is probably very good. So we do keep a lot of people in jail until their trial comes because of their past behaviors. But they, they wanted to change all that and, and not put anyone in jail until after conviction. So again, it's going to be catch and release. The police will catch you, we'll bring you in, we'll do the paperwork, and then you're going to be able to go free. And this includes every drug offense in New York State. There isn't one drug offense in New York State anymore where the police are going to be allowed to arraign you. So if you get caught with four kilos of heroin, uh, this could be an A1 felony, 25 years to life in prison. We're going to bring you in, process you, and we're going to give you a court date and, and make sure we tell you to come back to court. Well, wait a second. What about DWIs? And the same thing with the DWIs. You know, somebody has a felony DWI. It's their fourth DWI arrest tonight in town of Gates. Uh, we, 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 we have no right to arraign them anymore. They're going to be released with a court date. So they can really go home, get back in a car, and go out again, right? Right. And, and what I'm saying as, as a police chief, there is going to be a death toll. I, I, I mark my word, people are going to die because of this. The, the, a lot of good comes out of sometimes putting people down in the Monroe County Jail. So now you take the opioid epidemic, right? We, ha we have somebody uh, who's out binging, they get arrested, we bring them in um, before where maybe they went down on 200 hours bail. Uh, kind of break that cycle, you know, get them into uh, uh, the one thing the jail will do for you is detox you. Uh, how many people are just going to walk out of the police station and they might overdose and die within a, a day or two or hours later? Um, clearly, you know, that the, the domestic violence, right? How many, how many of these offenders are going to go out there and, and potentially could kill kill the victim, you know? Um, th these are all concerns that, that, that keep us up at night thinking about what's going to happen on January 1st <laughs> when all this goes into effect. And, and really, how, how are we going to protect people and how are we going to save people from, from, from being killed? I, I don't know. It's just, as, a family nobody thought member, as a family member, okay, um, and in speaking to a lot of family members, I know that I was hoping my son would be arrested. I Absolutely. was hoping that somebody, because I thought he was going to kill himself. Mm -hmm. I was yep. hoping that the police could intervene to, to put him in jail just to have his mind cleared for a little bit. Yeah, you know, we, we, we get phone calls all the time from parents um, whose kids are out there with an addiction, they're out prostituting, they're out shoplifting, committing crimes, calling us, please, we, we arrest them and, and put them in the jail. One, one thing it does bring to a parent when their, their loved one is in jail is that they can sleep at night. They, they know where they are, they know they're safe. Um, and again, that, that little time out uh, in the jail, whether it was for a couple days, uh, potentially was that time where you could break the cycle 
and, and get some sort of intervention for, for recovery or, or services that they need, that, that little time outbreak in the Monroe County Jail. So, and, and the other issue is, um, speaking of Sheriff Baxter, you know, between now and uh, January 1st, there's about 200 prisoners that, that by law are gonna have to be released by January 1st because they are sitting in jail on offenses that are not gonna qualify. Any, uh, it's, it's not good what, what's, coming down, what's coming down the railroad tracks. Yeah, well I know um, I'm in the recovered community all the time and I've spoken to a lot of people who have said I wasn't arrested, I was rescued. Rescued, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good word. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's what, they, they, they love the police officers, they remember their name, they visit them once a year, you know, whatever, on their anniversary. And they appreciate that they had that little period of time just to, just a moment of clarity, you know? Yeah, and I tell you, you know, some huge progress has been made, uh, especially with, uh, you know, the election of Sheriff Baxter and all the different programs that have been set up in the jail so that they don't just sit there with idle time and, and serve their month or six months uh, to offer them that, that second bite of the apple, right? To, to seek recovery, seek a trade skill, find a job. Um, you know, again, we've become a much more holistic approach on, on how we handle defendants and, and not just sweep them under the rug and lock them up. So, uh, unfortunately, if, I, if we can't get down to the Monroe County Jail, none of these programs are going to be uh, uh, viable. And so, this is, this is a huge setback for all the efforts that have been made to try to rescue people. And I do like that word rescue, that, that is very much appropriate. Um, you know, a lot of times when, when we arrest people, you know, they're not happy at the moment for DWI. You know, I can't tell you how many times we'd arrest somebody for using drugs and they say, well, aren't there bigger criminals to be out there catching besides me <laughs> using, <laughs> using my drugs? <laughs> yeah, but I'm also trying to rescue you, you know, so that you don't end up on my van, you know? Yeah. And, you know the last thing we wanted is someone to die. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's sad. It's unfortunate what's about to happen. If you want to keep using heroin, that's your business. If you want to stop using heroin, that's our business. Heroin Anonymous, Western New York. For more information, please visit our website at www.heroinanonymous585.org or call our 24-hour hotline to speak to a sober heroin addict at 585-348-8129. Hi everybody, my name is Carol Michelle Halsizer. I am Executive Director of Mission Recovery and Hope. The drug crisis has impacted our community. There were over 1,100 overdoses reported by the Sheriff's Department in 2018. Many families in our community are sitting across from an empty chair at the dinner table. If you need help, or if you have a loved one that needs help, please contact us. Our phone number is 585 944-4270.